Hi! Welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today we are taking a look at how to properly install an oil filter sandwich plate, and general oil system routing. As you can tell, my intro audio was completely fucked. That's just how she goes. Generally speaking, in any given car oil system, your oil flows from your oil pan and gets picked up by your oil pump and then gets pushed through your filter before being dispersed to the rest of your engine. It's important to note that the flow direction through your filter goes from outside to inside. That oil pump pushes the oil through those outside smaller holes of the filter, it gets sucked into the center and then pushed out through the center and into the rest of your engine. This means anything that you want filtered oil going to needs to be after that center section. This is my 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit. It has a 1984 1.6 liter turbo diesel in it. So just to get you acquainted, right here is my oil filter housing. You can see right below it is a sandwich plate that I'm using to run some oil pressure sensors and to run to an oil cooler. And below that is my filter. Now previously when I was setting everything up as a much younger person I thought that oil flowed from the inside of the filter to the outside, which is important because the sandwich plate goes between the flow coming out of the outside of this filter housing and the outside of the oil filter. That means any oil sampled from the sandwich plate is unfiltered. Although it's hard to see here, you can make out these two 10 an oil lines. So they're coming off the sandwich plate. So as oil correctly flows, it's coming down into this first line that comes into screen here. This right there is a thermostat. So oil's flowing in this line. When it's too cold, it gets circulated straight back. When it's warm enough, thermostat opens, allowing it to travel through and out to my oil cooler, back from the oil cooler, back through the thermostat, back over here and eventually back down to my oil filter. There's an important mistake that I am pointing at right here. Right here is the line for my turbo oil feed. So oil goes from this line to my turbocharger and then drains back to the oil pan. Trace that out for you. Eventually goes right over here to the turbo. Remember how I said when I was younger I thought oil flowed through the center and out through the outside of the filter housing. If that was the case, oil right now would be getting filtered, then cooled, then sent to my turbo. That's great. That's what you want. But that's not true. Oil flows from the outside of a filter housing to the inside, which means right now I have unfiltered oil getting cooled, which is fine, and then unfiltered cooled oil going to my turbo. At least it's cooled, but it's not filtered. That's a huge problem. What's important is though, this turbo and other turbos I've had have been getting fed unfiltered oil, which is unacceptable. I'm not driving the car another inch until I fix this problem. Fortunately, this new turbo cartridge was only driven the last 50 miles of my initial test drive with this configuration, so I doubt any if too much damage has been done, it was fresh engine oil, we should be okay. My method of fixing this is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this line setup right here and reroute this return line straight back to the sandwich plate. So the correct way to use a sandwich plate is to understand that none of the oil in it will be filtered. You can use it to route to your oil cooler and come back. You can use it to sample pressure, but it's not giving you filtered pressure, it's giving you unfiltered pressure. And it's not giving you filtered oil, it's giving you unfiltered oil. So the correct way to use this for me is gonna to be to run it through my thermostat, thermostat to oil cooler, back to housing, then T off the top of the filter housing after it's been filtered, still run my oil pressure gauge, getting the post filter pressure, and then still getting clean, fresh oil over to my turbo. To remove AN lines, I like to use a couple adjustable wrenches. If you're fancy, you buy aluminum wrenches so you don't scuff up your AN fittings, but I don't care. This is just a little adjustable wrench. This was a much longer adjustable wrench that I cut off to get into tight spaces. Highly recommend. It's not often you find a wrench that goes that wide that's this size. This 
uh, these are AN fittings, which I like to use, only because they're easy to take apart once you have them how you like them. That being once, once being the key determining agent in that sentence. Uh, I do find they're kind of a pain in the ball to set up, um, and, but usually worth it. For instance, I'm going to take this one apart. This line is now too long. I'm going to show you the comparison. This is the line directly next to it. This one needs to be about this much longer. It's way longer right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing down, change the end fitting to one that's gonna work in this orient new orientation, and we can go from there. Now I am undoing the fitting assembly itself. How these work are you uh, basically stick, and you can see this is twisting, basically press the hose into this lower part of the fitting and this upper part of the fitting quite literally screws into it in such a way that the hose gets crammed against the walls of the lower part of this fitting and in that way it seals. So 10 AN, which is what this is, is equivalent to 5 8 and each AN size have some hose equivalent uh, generally speaking, I think these used to be military fittings of one regard or another, and now they're just rather much enjoyed by people who work on cars. So you take that out and you can see inside is kind of a rubber mess right now because I unscrewed it, but that's because it actually was pressing the hose on there. And if I remove this, there you go. So this is tucked inside here and then compressed against the walls by this fitting and it makes a super tight, super well sealed bond with a hex nut on one side. Pretty sweet. Braided hose like this is notoriously difficult to work with. You see all these little strands at the end here. These love to jab into the ends of your fingers. It's hard to cut, it's hard to deal with. So I'm gonna show you some tips as well on how to cut a n hose and put your fittings back on without wanting to blow your brains out. This is the new fitting I'm gonna use. So these hoses will look very, very similar except for this one needs to be one nut length longer than this one. Inside here, you can see the hose doesn't go all the way through. There's some threads on this side. So I made a mark right where it meets. I marked a mark right back where I actually need to make the cut. And then I marked it at the foot now what I used to do, and what works pretty well in general for cutting this weird multi-composite hose, is just an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. It does a pretty mean job, but it tends to make the ends fray like this really badly. And so you're trying to press that frayed ass end into this tight space, and it's hard. So here comes duct tape. What I found works pretty well in general, and I don't think I think someone told me to do this, not so much this is my original idea but you can wrap the ends very tightly in tape electrical duct tape other tapes uh, and there's my cut line so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it right on the line and you wrap it in duct tape and that actually keeps those little embers manageable so it keeps them from getting out of hand because now when I go to cut it they can't just spring up the duct tape is holding it all together that said, after I cut it and clean it, still gonna have to take the duct tape off. And it's still gonna be slightly difficult, but just better. The other drawback to using an angle grinder, although that was pretty easy, is uh, it, it makes a mess. So I'm gonna have to clean the inside of this really thorough because there's like little rubber pieces everywhere. On the bright side, this is unfiltered oil still, so it'll still cruise through my oil filter. To illustrate for you too, so this is the end that wasn't taped. If you don't tape it and you cut it, do you see how much that splays out? Now look, if I go and try to put this on it, hopeless. You're like trying to get it in. I mean, it's, it's really tough and it's sharp, so it's really not much fun. Instead, we have this still, which is pretty fine still isn't going to fit because there's duct tape in the way, but I'm going to undo the duct tape and then I'm going to put some grease on both sides and then I'll put it together. Oh. Alright. 
very carefully now. All right, comparison. Taped versus untaped. Big difference, right? I already put some grease inside this fitting and cleaned it really well. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on this. Uh, right here sticks out a lot. I'm gonna put that in first. And then I'm gonna work the other edges with this screwdriver. Oh wow, this is going super well actually. All right, it never goes that smoothly. That really worked well. And then you still gotta get it in there until it's fully seated. Let's check our work. Yes, see how this is all the way up against the end there? That's what you want. Just about as long as we want it to, perfect. So now, the other trick of it is screwing your fitting back in. Now I'm using this fitting, so I need to take this end cap off. So this, I'm gonna screw into here. This will have a tendency to push this out, so I'm gonna go ahead and grease this surface too, and put some more grease down in here, and then I'm gonna push it all together. As you go to start it, hold the hose, not the fitting, when you get these threads started so you don't push the hose out of the way accidentally. There we go, and we're started. And now the way these should work is once you start threading them in here, they should be pushing out on the hose enough that it doesn't push out of the fitting while you're tightening it. It's worth keeping an eye on the hose as you're doing this and making sure it's not just getting shoved out the bottom. I'm about done tightening it. And what's more important I find than getting it all the way snug is just the aesthetics, which some might laugh at this point because I've already marred this fitting really badly. But I like to make sure the angles of each face line up. Whereas if sometimes you tighten it all the way, let me see if I can show you all the way tight will be a little bit off of the hex side lining up. Like that, that's all the way tight. Doesn't look very nice, doesn't matter. This thing's really, really in there. So right there, it's totally fine. That'll work beautifully. One last important step too is usually when you press slash tighten these fittings in, this kind of edge here is decently sharp and it actually tends to shave a little bit of the inside of the hose off when you're tightening. So I just now ran some isopropyl through it. You could run some brake clean through it. This one's empty, but you just need to run something through it because I would anticipate there being little rubber pieces inside your hose after you finish making the length of hose that you're making. One final word of guidance slash caution is deciding what length is appropriate for your AN hose. And this scenario is pretty straightforward because I was able to measure off of this one, which is set up the exact same way. In general though, it becomes more of an art than a science because if it's too long, you get too much flex and you put too much stress on the fittings on either end and you'll get a leak. Or if it's too short, same thing, you'll get a leak or it just straight up won't reach. So dialing in this exact length can take some time and practice. Additionally, you have to account for the fact that it threads on at both ends, which is in total probably a, almost an inch difference in length. This is your first time working with AN hoses not that this was an AN hose dedicated video, but take my guidance, you have with a lot of patience and take your time. You might have to do several cuts to approach the correct value of your total length. This is what it looks like with my new section of hose run instead. Nice and clean and tidy. Now all I need to do is connect this fitting with some Teflon tape, put my oil pressure in the top and run a 4AN line off of this side. This is my setup for running oil pressure to my turbo that's filtered. This is going in my oil pressure port of, that receives filtered oil pressure. This is a quarter inch NPT fitting. NPT fittings are pipe fittings. They have slanted threads, which is something I didn't know when I was younger, which means as you're tightening them, it is literally wedging itself into the hole. That means most of the time you will not actually screw this all the way up to the face. I've tried to do this once when I was younger and horribly ruined several things. Now, this is NPT and both these holes are NPT as well. So this right here is an NPT to AN fitting and this is my 4AN fitting. So together we arrive at this full assembly. So now I'm splitting 
an NPT fitting, two ways, one to my oil pressure, and one that can now run a 4AN hose. All NPT fittings should be assembled with threaded tape, which is what I will do now, whereas AN fittings, which have these beveled edges, do not need any tape. For NPT fittings, you want to thread your pipe tape in the direction you'll be screwing it in so that it doesn't come out as you twist it on. Now, tape is primarily not a sealant. A lot of people think tape seals. This tape is primarily a lubricant so that you can actually turn this in pretty far. Here is my final form. We got two lines. I have my oil filter, or oil pressure line run, I have my turbo oil feed run. Now all that's left to do is start it up and make sure there are no leaks. Here we go. Thank you for watching, that's how to set up a sandwich plate correctly, how they operate, and also some tidbits on how to use hoses and fittings. If you like this, please like and subscribe, and if you're someone who's chomping at the bit to see this test drive video, it's coming, I promise, uh, soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, I appreciate you, have a good day.